through chemistry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Tonight we present a new radio play, The Diary of a Saboteur, written by Peter Lyon, especially for Cavalcade. A play that might be taking place in your own hometown. Starring Joseph Schildkraut as the Nazi secret agent and Mildred Natwick as a New England shopkeeper in Diary of a Saboteur on the Cavalcade of America. <laughs> Logicious Laboratorium, the psychological laboratory of the Nazi Third Reich, with offices at Lerfestrasse 58, Berlin, commanded by General Hans von Horst. Let us imagine it is 1939, and that an agent named Karl Ritter is summoned to the office of General von Horst. Their conversation would have gone somewhat along these lines. Karl Ritter reporting, sir. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler, Captain Ritter. You must have it is. Thank you. Miss Ernst? Yes, Captain General? Bring me the Ritter file. Thanks, Sir General. Oh, have a seat, Ritter. Thank you. You may smoke if you wish. Thank you, sir. Here's the Ritter file, sir. Thanks. Uh, that's all for the moment. Carl Friedrich Ritter. Correct? Correct, sir. Oh. Two years special study at the psychological laboratory. Doesn't list your curriculum, Captain. Psychoanalysis, personality study. National psychology and propaganda techniques were the courses emphasized. Sir. Oh, and the usual subsidiary work in social organization. Now how about oratory? I mean, uh, platform techniques. Oh, yes, of course, sir. Six months. Of course, I took the preliminary basic year of chemistry, code, shortwave radio, microphotography. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Rita, you still have your American citizenship, I hope. Why, uh, yes, sir. Am I being sent back to America? At once. You are to concentrate on all our general directors of the moment. Anti-Semitism, of course. Yes, Usual emphasis on the menace of Bolshevism. You read Goebbels' last speech? Yes, sir. Then you know our general line. Quite. I don't need to tell you the specialized angles, the possibility of playing on the theme of white supremacy over the Negroes, attacks on the president, the utilization of our various organizations in America, all our usual Nazi tactics. Quite. Oh, uh, can I get a list of those of our people over there that I'm to see? Well, speak to Miss Ernst about it on your way out. Yes, sir. And she has some money for you and the usual credentials. Automobile license, social security card. Uh, good. Any specific instructions, sir? Yes. You're getting a ticket to Montreal for two reasons. First, we can hope that the FBI will miss you that way. <laughs> Second, because I want you to get me some information almost immediately, even before you get to New York. Yes, sir. On your way from Montreal to New York, I want you to stop off in New England. In Mill City, to be precise. Mill City. We have learned of a tremendous new factory being built there for some entirely new weapon. Hmm. It is, of course, inconceivable that these Americans have developed a weapon which we have not already in our arsenal. Of course. Yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, I want you to investigate not only this factory, but its products. In New York, you will get in touch with the courier appointed to you, and he will transmit your findings. Understood? Completely, sir. And when I'm in New York? You will do everything in your power to ensure American neutrality when the war breaks out, particularly... Set the Bundists right. This is of vital importance. You will get all the money you need for the work. It must be incessant, plentiful, and effective. Right, sir. And when, or rather, if I am unable to continue that sort of work? You will decide about that when the occasion arises. Right, sir. That's all. See Miss Ernst on your way out. But remember, your first assignment is in Mill City. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. <laughs> Good morning. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a special cigar, ma'am. A kind that I rather like the... What's the name of them? Oh, <laughs> there. Right there. They're in this box. That box? <laughs> well, there ain't nothing special about this cigar. 
I reckon every cigar store in Mill City carries this cigar. Oh. How many do you want, mister? Oh, a half a dozen will do. Thank you. A lot of activity down the street, isn't there? Yep. Looks like a new factory going up. Yep. One of them, one of them defense factories, I take it. Yep. Well, I guess the city feels pretty good about getting this new business. It means you'll sell more papers and cigars, too, doesn't it? Likely. Uh, tell me, what are they going to be making in that factory? Hey, they ain't taken me into their confidence on that point yet, mister. Well, 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 man, you don't need to bite my head off. do <laughs> make me sound as if I were a spy or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't be too sure these days, can you? You thinking of getting a job there? Well, no, not exactly. You see, I'm a salesman. And I was just curious to find out if this factory there was going to be the kind that would need some of my product, maybe. Well, if it's the kind of goods to help make tank busters, you've got a client. Tank busters, is it? That's what they say. Mm. Well, I guess I'd better look up the plant manager right away. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Please, and about the 10th floor. Yes. I expect to be here indefinitely. Uh, here's my card. Thank you, sir. You can attend to any financial questions through my bankers, the export mercantile on Wall Street. I uh, shall want an extra and private telephone put in my sitting room. Can you attend to that for me? Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Jensen. Uh, shall I register you under your business address in Stockholm, sir? Yes, if you please. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boy! What? Room 1033. Come in. Mr. Jensen? Yes? I come for greetings from Brandsau, Berlin, and Hamburg. Brandsau, Berlin, Hamburg. Oh, good. I was expecting you. Ah. And Captain Ritter. Hi, Ritter. Hi, Hitler. My name is, of course, known to you. Well, your arrival is most welcome. Uh, tell me the news. I'm all eagerness. You've heard of our work back in the Fatherland, I suppose? Yes, we've heard of it. Ah, yes, yes. Things progress. You don't need to worry about us. We are justly proud of our work, I can tell you. I'm afraid you're alone in your pride, sir. What? Shut up. Listen to me. And take both that foolish smile and that fraudulent look of consternation off your face. Your tactics have been wrong, all wrong. From now on, and I want this instruction to be transmitted to all our organizations... When a speaker gets up on an American platform, he's to forget Germany. When a pamphlet comes out, it is to ignore Germany. Ignore Germany? Exactly. You heard me. Just that. From now on, in public, you are no longer Germans. Understand? You're Americans. Similarly, when you attack something, you attack it as un-American. Alien, Jewish, Bolshevist. From now on, you're an American patriot. Understood? Mm. Un-American. Right. Yeah, I think I understand, Captain Widow. Anyway, so much for form. Now as for content. Oh, by the way, you'd better take some notes on all these things. Oh, of course, of course, Captain. If I may just borrow your fountain pen here... Put for... that pen down. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be... Here. Here's a pencil. Just let me have that fountain pen, please. Oh, yes, sure. I, I'm sure I didn't mean That's to... Right. Never mind. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes. The content of your propaganda. Everything your speakers say, every printed word you get out, all must focus on one thing, American neutrality. Hmm. Implement this general directive with every means at your command. All our energies are to be thrown behind keeping America out of the war until Germany is ready. Uh, what are we to do if such work becomes illegal? <laughs> if we fail and America goes to war? Then, my friend, the form of our work changes, but it does not stop. Changes? Yes. You see this fountain pen? The one you almost were foolish enough to use a moment ago? Yes. Very well. It contains a very interesting chemical arrangement. I, uh, <laughs> I have several fountain pens like this one. Oh, yes. Yes, I have heard about them. It's a thermite bomb, no? It will burn. Never fear for me, my friend. And I'll get on about your work. 
I wish to see results immediately in every sidewalk auditor, every mother's organization, every trade union, even from church pulpits, even from the floor of Congress itself. <laughs> Being dragged into war by a government that has been taken over by radicals and aliens. I tell you the truth. Mothers, we must stand together. Our sons are to be slaughtered on foreign fields for the profits of Jewish bankers. I repeat. Why, friends, if this keeps up, there won't be any election in November. You can bet on that. Yes, sir. You can listen, bet. pal. Germany will never attack us, and Japan is bogged down in China. We're safe now, and we're safe for years to come. December 7th, 1941. Gentlemen, order. Captain Ritter has the floor. Gentlemen, as a few of us have known for some weeks now, our work has got to undergo an immediate change. From now on, the emphasis will be all on splitting the United States from Russia and England. All right, everybody. We must take no chances. This meeting will have to break up immediately. At any moment, the FBI may be on our trail. You will know how to get in touch with me at Mill City if you need to. And remember, from now on, we are soldiers of the Third Reich on enemy soil. Our Führer looks to us to fulfill our national socialist destiny. Today, gentlemen, we own Germany. Tomorrow, the world. Hi, 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 Yes, sir. Hello, Mrs. Abbott. Well, well, well. I guess you don't remember me. I came here about a year ago. Oh, I'm afraid I do. Oh, now we chatted about that factory, don't you remember? Oh, well. I'm sorry. I... Well, no matter. My name is William Miller. I, I work now over at that same factory. Do you now? Yep. Well, welcome to Mill City. Thanks. This is my daughter, Priscilla, Mr. Miller. She works in the big factory, too. Hello. Oh, how do you do? You you work in that factory, too, huh? Oh, sure. I'm on the assembly line, the machine shop. Where? And this is Clem Hall. He's Priscilla's intended. Glad to see you, Mr. Miller. How are you? <laughs> Congratulations to you both. You work in that big factory, too, do you? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's great. Perhaps we can all walk to the plant together this morning, huh? No, I'm afraid not, Mr. Miller. Priscilla and I are working on the swing shift this week. We aren't going to the plant until tonight. Oh, I see. Well, that's too bad. Well... Some other time. Eh? Mrs. Abbott, I make it a point to buy all my newspapers and cigarettes right here. The <laughs> more the merrier. Come on. Right, so long, Mrs. Abbott. Secretly, I'm Belletro. All FBI regional and divisional officers. Report on any trace of Nazi agent Carl Ritter. Alias John Jensen. Alias William Miller. Must get checked soon. Believed to be somewhere in New England. This is imperative. Action order. See file for activities and description. Well, Mr. Miller, haven't seen you in the dog's age. Oh, Mrs. Abbott. Oh, I've been working pretty hard, I guess. Keeping you busy, are they? How are things at the plant? Not so good. Well, I must say, Mr. Miller, you don't sound so tricky these days. Well, a lot of us are beginning to ask ourselves, what are we working so hard for? We didn't ask for this war, did we? Really? No, that's right, we didn't. No. There's lots of folks don't ask to catch cold either. That's right. Wake up on a Sunday morning and sneeze once or twice. There they are with fever and snuffles. That's snuffles. right. The war isn't going any too well for us either, Mrs. Abbott. Don't kid yourself. Say, any of your friends got sons in the Navy? My Dick. He's in it all right. That's so. Men in our family have been going to sea for six generations. Lots of folks around here are the same. Uh, Why? Well, uh, I, I wouldn't want to worry you or them for that matter. It's probably nothing. Why, what, what is it? Well, you see, Mrs. Abbott, I've got a sister down in Savannah, Georgia. And she wrote me that the three ships have put in at the harbor. They're all, uh, all loaded with coffins. Coffins? Oh, yes, they, they say we've suffered a terrible naval disaster in the North Atlantic, Mrs. Abbott. I guess the government in Washington is trying to hush it up. Well, I suppose that's why they had those ships put in at Savannah, not in Boston or in New York. Well, I imagine the government knows best. But it does seem a little bit funny, Coffins. doesn't it? 
My dick was on Atlantic patrol. Well, I tell you, I wouldn't tell your friends about it, Mrs. Abbott. They just worry. Oh, Miss Abbott. Oh. oh, hi there, Miller. Hi there, Clem. Uh, Priscilla, huh? Afraid not, Clem. But she said she was going to meet you here at eight to go to the movies. Yeah, that's the trouble. I have to break the date. I've got to go to a safety committee meeting tonight at the plant. Well, I'll tell her. I'd like to leave her a note. Can I borrow a pencil? Oh, oh, pencil. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Clem. I lost mine. I was looking for it just a minute ago. Coffins. That's terrible. What? What's that about coffins? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just, just a rumor, Clem. I wouldn't spread it. Oh, a rumor. Oh, say, uh, Miller, you yeah. have a pen there. May I borrow it to write Priscilla a note? Well, uh, this pen? Yeah, but I... Oh, I won't hurt it. I just want to write a little note. Well, it's this way, Clem. You see, I'm left-handed, and the point of this pen is delicate. You don't mind, do you? It's a peculiarity of mine. Oh, all right. Never mind, Clem. I'll give Priscilla your message. Oh, you'll excuse me, please. I'm late for an appointment. So long, Clem. So long, Mrs. Abbott. So long. He's a funny guy. It's a terrible, shocking thing he told me just before you came. Terrible, shocking thing. You are listening to Joseph Shilkraut as the Nazi agent and Mildred Natwick as a New England shopkeeper in Diary of a Saboteur on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. It is some weeks after Pearl Harbor, and Carl Ritter, ace Nazi agent carrying out orders from Berlin, has gotten a job at the war plant in Mill City. And now, as our play continues, he is planning with his associates to carry out his work of sabotage. Are you coming? Evening, Charlie. Sorry to be late for the meeting. I was over at the cigar store. Max and Fred are both here. Oh, hello, hello Max. Anything by short wave? Berlin wants specifications on the tank buster. Oh, they do. Something easier. Mm. It's almost time for another short wave, Captain Ritter. Radio's tuned in. Want the earphones? Oh, uh, never mind. Plug in the speaker. Maybe something for all of us. Okay. This is Berlin calling. There they are. Berlin calling North America. In just a moment, we will bring you I the news. I recognize that voice. Shut up. But first, we present a musical interlude. From the G minor sonata of Van Kuhl. G minor, this is our we message, bring you all the right. the first movement marked Andante. That's it, Andante. Something important, huh? Rap, listen. Are you ready, Max? Yes. Go on, listen. That's enough. Turn it off. Mm. Well, did you get it, Max? Yes. Hmm. Well, come on, come on, decode it. What's it say? Oh, yeah. Well? Ah. Now I have it. It's an order that the plant must be destroyed. Oh, well, this could change our plans. No, it won't. Our plans are all made. I made them. What are they? Oh. This little pen here. I almost had an embarrassing time with it a half hour ago. The boy in the cigar store wanted to borrow it to write a note to his sweetheart. <laughs> yes, but who will plant the pen, you? No, even that I planned. I have the perfect dupe to take this little pen in for us. When? On our way to the plant tomorrow night. <laughs> Going to work? Yep. Thought I'd look in first, Mrs. Abbott, for a cigar. Oh, good enough. I'll go with you. I'm going to have my hands full tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The foreman asked me to tell the machine crew the new safety rules. Well, I guess there's work for all of us these days. Boy, you're not kidding. <laughs> now, here we are. Go yeah. ahead. Thanks, Tim. Well, hello. Hello. Howdy, Mrs. Abbott. Didn't Priscilla get here yet? Oh, she'll be here in a minute. Now, uh, Mrs. Abbott, I believe I've run up quite a bill at your store the last two or three weeks. Oh, don't I? bother, Mr. Miller. Of course, if you do have a little cash with you, I can always use it. Well, I have no cash, Mrs. Abbott. But I, I write you a check. Uh, how much does it come to? Papers, magazines, cigars? Well, it's you know. right here in my account books. Yeah. Well, let's see. L M. There, four sixty-two. Four sixty-two. There you are. 
I think you'll find it's good. <laughs> well, if it isn't, I know where to find you, eh? <laughs> I guess. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, silly, my factory identification badge. I left it at home. Now, it's... I'd better run for it. Hello. So on. That's funny. What? Oh, oh, it's not important. Still. Oh, Mom. Hello, Priscilla. Hello, honey. I Clem, that man Miller just hollered at me that he'd left his pen here. Oh, yeah, it is. Sure has a dropsy tonight, ain't he? Oh, he was running for the bus. He wants you to bring it to him at the plant, Clem. Okay. What's the matter? You look worried. Oh, I'm all right. I just don't like that guy. Don't like him. Something. Oh, I don't know. Well, forget him. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Well, forget Miller if you want to. But don't forget his pen. Instant action order. Nazi agent Carl Ritter reported in Mill City. Agents proceed from Boston to New Haven to Mill City at once. Imperative you arrest him when he comes off work on night shift at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Don't think it was taking a chance on not going to work tonight? Of course not, you idiot. This way there can be no suspicion of us. Yes, but if they find the pen... Charlie, Charlie, that thermite will burn the pen so quickly that there won't even be a trace in there. <laughs> Why don't we hear the fire engines? It's ten minutes late already. How long a delay did you put in the time mechanism? Well, it was to go off at midnight. Yeah, midnight. The boy's working on the night shift this week. It's better that way, you know. The fire will have a chance to get really going. Enough chance to get to the turpentine barrels next to the locker room. And after what? that... Listen. Yeah. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> Success. That mechanism went off fully ten minutes ago. Well, that is a fire which is by now well underway. Go on, Charlie. You've got twenty minutes to get this. Uh, you hold the door. Please. Yeah, you go first. Uh, I ain't got that. Here, open the door. Yeah. Ooh, look at that smoke in the sky, kid. Beautiful. Yes, uh, come on, Ruto. We'd better hurry. Huh? <laughs> These Americans, they think they can fight a war against now, us. Now, we'll miss our train with us. That's right. Come on, hurry. What's the hurry for, Ritter? Uh, why? Who are you? What's this about? I said, what's your hurry? Where's the fire, Ritter? Is it Jensen? Or is it Miller? Or is it Neil? Keep your hands away from your pockets, you there. Just keep holding those suitcases. I don't know what you're talking about, either of you. Do you want to tell him, Mrs. Abbott? Oh, good morning, Mrs. Abbott. What are you doing here? So early? Well, who are these men? Just some gentlemen from the FBI, Mr. What's-Your-Name. That's right, Ritter. FBI? Come along, both of you. It took a little time, Miller, but we caught up with you. Very well. But at least I've carried out the orders of my Fuhrer. It'll be some time before you Americans will build any more tank busters in that beautiful plant of yours. Well, as usual, I guess the lady gets the last word. Go ahead, Mrs. Abbott. Oh, yes, Rita. We had a little fire in town tonight. Some old newspapers in my backyard. Why, you're lying. My pen set fire to the plant. Oh, no, it didn't. You should know better than to make out your check with your right hand when you told Clem and me you were left-handed. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph Shilkraut and Mildred Natwick. Before we tell you about our play and star for next week, we have some news that all DuPont workers are proud of. Ted Jewett of the Cavalcade has just returned from a DuPont plant on the Delaware River where he witnessed the presentation of still another Army Navy E to a DuPont plant. I'm going to ask him to tell you what it's like to attend an E ceremony behind the guarded gates of a chemical plant making materials for war. Yes? I was there, and I can tell you a little of what I saw. This DuPont plant, among the latest to receive the E, is called the Dye Works because, more perhaps than any other plant in the country, it helped to give the United States a dye industry after the last war. But in this war, it isn't making dyes alone. It's making more than a thousand products, going either directly or indirectly to the fighting forces. It's grown so that it has its own railroad line, about 25 miles of track within the plant's many acres. That was the thing that excited me in my tour of the plant, a feeling of production on an intensive scale, 
a feeling that products were literally pouring out of this plant by the train load. We need production to win the war. This is production, as only Americans can produce. Major General Clifford L. Corbin of the U.S. Army Quartermaster Corps presented the award, and he said in part, I quote, the output for the military as well as the civilians of hundreds of textile plants is absolutely dependent upon the production of this plant. The management and the employees of this company are producing materials that are just as essential for the war effort as are guns and airplanes. Our meeting today is a tribute to your record. Just as a soldier of the battlefield is decorated for valor and outstanding performance, so you, collectively, today, are being decorated. Unquote. The award was accepted for DuPont by Dr. William Kirk, the plant manager, and W.W. W. Weatherby, the president of the plant's collective bargaining agency. Now, standing beside me in the studio is a man from the Dye Works who was a member of the Employees Committee to receive the Army Navy E pins, Mr. Al Brown. Mr. Brown has been with the DuPont Company for 43 years. Al, how do you feel about this E <clears throat> award? I feel proud, especially when I remember that 25 years ago, the place where the Dye Works now stands was just swampy wash marshland. And the one big building I worked in, 1917, has become 700 buildings a day. What a change in the last quarter of a century. In 1920, we shipped 14 million pounds of various dye stuffs. This became 168 million pounds of various finished products in 1940. We began by making dye stuffs. Today, we are making not only dye stuffs, but hundreds of different products to serve American industry in its fight for victory. We're producing all right, day and night. That's all I have to say except that we're doing everything in our power to back up the fighting men on the fighting fronts. We'll prove that we deserve this Army Navy E by doing our jobs just a little bit better. Thank you, Al Brown and Ted Jewett. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army Navy E, about which we've told you tonight, is one of many awarded to DuPont plants across the nation. This is a continued story that will run on for the duration. Part of the story of the wartime work of the plants producing DuPont peacetime better things for better living through chemistry. finest traditions of the United States Naval Service. All of us thrilled to that citation, heard so often today, but there's one man who would thrill more than any of us, could he hear it? He is John Paul Jones, founder of our Navy. It is his story that Cavalcade brings you next week with Ralph Bellamy as our star. Be with us next week when DuPont again sponsors the Cavalcade of America. Our star will be Ralph Bellamy. Our play, called The 18th Captain, is the exciting and ever-timely story of our Navy's rise to glory. Cavalcade is pleased to remind its listeners that Joseph Schildkraut, heard on tonight's program, is now starring in Uncle Harry, and that Miss Mildred Natwick is co-starring in Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit, both plays currently Broadway successes. Tonight's play, written by Peter Lyon, was based on original material by Michael Stairs and Albert Kahn, authors of the recent bestseller, Sabotage. The orchestra and musical score for tonight's program were under the direction of Don Vorey. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from DuPont. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.